you think about that. So out of uh, 186 billion uh, dollar industry, only 11 billion of that is online legal services. And that opens up a lot of room to grow and in some some respects disrupt sort of the traditional way in which we hire attorneys and they do work for us right uh and so attorney shield does that in a time utility way and in an immediate way but there are other things that we have on our roadmap in terms of products and services that will further disrupt the way you're used to hiring an attorney. Andy talked about it earlier about, you know, you got to take time off from work, go into some attorney's office, sit in a little chair and you're feeling like this little guy and it's very intimidating. Nobody wants to do that, right? And so there's a huge opportunity to grow around, uh, you know, illegal functions that are even outside of police initiated contact. How do we uh, not only deliver it quickly within you know a 24/7 operation, but how do we do it at a price point to where everybody can afford it? How this can sit on everybody's cell phone and really resonate with the average person who doesn't have the money for a retainer, who doesn't have you know the ability to take the day off or to go sign a contract or you know to sit in an office against across from an attorney where there's plaques that. You know kind of puts them on the pedestal and it's it uh you know makes you a little bit intimidated we wanted an easy fast quick 24 7 solution one that everyone could afford and that's what we built uh, I, I believe this at least i'm not saying anybody else does but government has a lot of power uh and the, what we call the returns on violence, meaning if you don't do what the government wants, they have people in bad with badges who will come and and take care of you because of that, right? And many of the stuff that they come after us for is just absolute crap. I should be able to fish without a license to feed my family. I should be able to sell lemonade on the street without a permit. Uh, and so the way the government sort of creeps into our lives, I think there just needs to be a, a pushback on that to a certain extent. And it begins with pushing back on people who are or who are violating your rights. Right. And there's no politician that is going to pass legislation that's going to somehow have police give up some of their power. Once power exists, once people have power, they don't give it up. Right. They don't give it up. And since we really started looking at it, the problem is so severe with the overreach of power, uh, the abuse of power. Uh, there was no reason, no probable cause to pull the person over. You know, there was no DUI. There was nothing. I mean, they ended up just pulling them over, trying to do some citations, get some money and revenue into the bank for the town or city. And that leads into a get out of the car, whatever. That scenario right there has put so many people in jail and are resisting arrest where you've got a mugshot and you've got court fees and you've got bonds and all this other stuff. Some people lose their jobs. Some people lose, you know, family members because of it. Their family gets busted up, etc. So we when we come up with this idea, when we seen this this problem and we had this idea for the solution, we were like, man, we've got to do this. Speaking of Florida and use of force, do you believe Attorney Shill could have helped the Dolphins player Tyreek Hill? <laughs> I've thought about this and I actually thought about writing a blog article about it because I think it's so germane to the subject, right? And then a lot of people are like, oh, Attorney Shield could have stopped the cops from XYZ. Well, yeah, maybe. But I think it's all in behavior modification. So let's just say, what was the issue that the police officer took issue with with, uh, with uh, Tyreek Hill? It was the fact that he rolled his window back up and he didn't like that. Now watch this. If Tyreek Hill had an attorney on basically, uh, whether it was his own FaceTime with his attorney or uh, attorney shield, if he, had, he wouldn't have rolled his window back up, he would have stuck that phone out to the officer and said, look, officer, I've got my attorney with me, yada, yada, yada. And that would have immediately de-escalated the situation. And likely he would have never been asked to get out of the car. So, you know, when we built this service, we really built it around just the, the, the price point where there's an affordability, 
but also the, the ease of access. So, you know, there's never been a time in our history where folks have had an opportunity to have a, an attorney when they actually need it in the moment that they need it, not after the incident. And that's what our service really is is built upon is, to, you know, is providing that access right there when you really, you really need the opportunity to say, hey, I shouldn't be speaking right here. You know, I may make a mistake. Your heart rate's accelerated. You know, there's tension between you and maybe the officer just because of the blue lights on. There's been some studies on that. So our service is just really built around protecting you in that moment, giving you that ease, that that peace of mind that, hey, you've got backup too. And Dave and I had an experience where we witnessed something really similar to this, uh, where someone was in an incident and we thought to ourselves, man, this guy really needed an attorney button. I'm certainly not anti-police. Uh, my son-in-law in particular is a police officer uh, here in Florida, and um, he's just one of the best guys I know. And um, I know that whenever Andy and I were developing this concept, <laughs> I was afraid to talk to him about it, right? And But when I did, I finally talked to him about it, and um, you know, I explained it to him, and he goes, his first reaction was, I think that's needed. And he goes, people get super nervous and they do dumb things. and if they can, if, if you're doing something that makes them, you know, able to communicate better, that makes them less stressed because we're just trying to get through the situation too. But when somebody's stressed, we get stressed. right? And yeah. so, and then there's so many people who feel, who don't realize that they don't have to agree to everything a police officer asks. And he's watched his colleagues sort of request searches and everybody just sort of caves right away and says, yeah, sure. I've got a 17 year old about to go out um, into college here next year. So I'm scared to have her out, you know, away from us, away from the nest and being able to hit that emergency button. On, that's important to me as a parent. We want to know, you know where she's at so we get that geolocation and we want to know when she hit the button. And we also have that peace of mind that, hey, someone is helping her and this is a legal professional, whatever that incident is, somebody's there in that moment. And it doesn't matter what time it is, you know, in a way at college, you're out, you know, partying or at events or traveling to and from games or maybe you're at the Waffle House, who knows. <laughs> but during those times, you know, uh, we may not, you know, catch that call right away. And, and uh, so to know that we have that peace of mind that our our uh, daughter has the service is, is very important to us. And, and I pay a lot more for it than what we're charging, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you just made me want to go get lunch at the Waffle House. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever eaten at a Waffle House. I've eaten at a Waffle House. And so we know that officers, police officers give one another professional courtesy when they see one of their colleagues or someone in their their uh, profession breaking the law. You know, I oh, will slow down or get get your get get home. You know, this doesn't always happen, but they, there is a lot of professional courtesy. But even when they arrest the officer who's who's clearly drunk they give that guy so much consideration but if that were me and you we'd be tased and you know hogtied basically and in the back of a squad car quicker than you can blink your eye right if we resisted the way some of those other guys resisted but you know and, and, and with all that said i mean you're right you know it doesn't happen all the time there's really good law enforcement out there i've encountered them they've been mm -hmm. your former military police i believe and uh well, you know we've got a lot of officer friends and uh, so we're not an anti-police product. We're just a pro-rights product. You know, we're about protecting your constitutional rights in those moments when you need it most. Love it or hate it, here's what I like about auditing, right? Auditing holds our government to account, all right? And so if you feel like the government shouldn't be held to account, then maybe you don't like auditing. But if you feel like the government needs to be held to account, auditing activities sort of help shed light on how our government behaves with regular citizens when they aren't doing things that are illegal and when they are not trying to or not wanting to be transparent right and but the sad part about that is that the police can't resist as if they don't have other crimes to solve for meaning somebody's at that very moment is getting assaulted or somebody at that very moment is getting mugged or robbed or burglarized go solve those crimes don't mess with people who aren't breaking the law